So, the Arsenal update is live, and it's been far from an eventful few days. Sweeping changes, new weaponry attachments that pushes weapons that were once considered eh to Oh, okay. New vehicle weapons, server issues that were just a pain in the ass. A lot has happened here, guys. So after a weekend's worth of exposure, let's talk about this patch and who the real winners are. G'day there once again, viewers. Your mate Kamikaze78 here. And today, we're going to talk about the Arsenal update and make some sense of everything that has just gone down. Now, before we get too far, let's address the elephant in the room, the server issues. Whether you were going through Emerald and getting hard G15 crashes straight to desktop, or on Connery and experiencing some of the strangest lag you've ever seen, or any other server for that matter, it wasn't a fun weekend to be playing Planetside. It's not something that's been really isolated to this weekend either. I've noticed that Connery as of late has been really hitching it on the weekends during prime time, which has not been fun to deal with. But this weekend seems to be the one where it sort of fell through and became unplayable. Now, the developers have acknowledged the issue and have said that they're going to be taking a deeper dive on Monday, aka the time this video is going live, to see if they can fix the latency and hitching issues. We can also expect to see some double XP come our way to make good for the weekend that fell through, which is a good thing. I was as frustrated as the next guy, guys, do not worry, but well, I also understand that weekends are a thing and these things happen. I'm just hoping that the developers can get this stuff fixed ASAP and we can move on because I'd rather be talking about the update itself right now, which for those who have been out of the loop, here's the headline stats of this update. More than 800 new weapon attachments, which is really seven new attachments spread out across the arsenal, but it sounds more impressive when you say it the other way. Three new Empire-specific vehicle weapons that take on board a more jack-of-all-trade role. Broad infantry balance changes, including revisiting less desirable weapons and a complete revisiting of directive weapons across the board. Four new class-specific grenades. It has to be said that the most amount of fun that I've been having so far has been with the new impulse grenades for the ultimate amount of zooming across the battlefield, and four new Empire-specific mines. There's a lot here. In fact, this is one of the longest patches I've ever seen for Planet Side 2 in the form of word count. And while we did do a lot of testing on the public test server in the lead up to this update, there's been a lot of learning and a lot of confirming what I already suspected would have been just insane to use now after this update went live. And before anyone asks me, Yes, I am going to look and see about getting some up-to-date reviews out there for some key items that saw some particularly interesting changes this time around. I want to start off here by briefly talking about some of the new attachment options that I've come to really like depending on the weapon choice and the playstyle I'm adopting. First things first, the heavy barrel and forward grip combination. The heavy barrel is the new barrel attachment that grants you a 20% reduction to aimed cone of fire bloom while reducing your aiming down sight's movement speed by the same amount. I have to say this is the one attachment out of the entire attachment collection I was looking forward to using the most on my weapons because I like to ADS whenever I can and this is an attachment that helps me directly with that. And I've got to say this really does make weapons feel like total laser beams when fired under sustained bursts. Between the effect of the forward grip by reducing the impact of the quote-unquote random recoil side of the game, that being the horizontal recoil, and reducing the amount of bloom your weapon faces over a long burst, it just means you can cut down people ridiculously easy without letting off the trigger. The footage you're seeing right now is of me using the TMG-50 with that exact combination, and man, it's pretty bloody good. The TMG-50 was always one of those guns that had a special spot in my heart, but now, man, I'm in love. It feels almost too easy to control. You know, as someone who always has understood the need to burst in this game to do well, it feels like an attachment combination that can realistically circumvent that aspect of weapon control for the time it takes to score a kill. So that's going to make some weapons feel incredibly smooth to use. Maybe too much so. I want to discuss that in a future video, so make sure you subscribe for that because I think it's going to be an interesting one. The compensator and the angled forward grip combo is just something serious as well. It has to be said. Take the angled forward grip, an attachment that lowers your first shot vertical recoil by 60% at the cost of 10% stronger horizontal kick, and add on a compensator that now negates vertical recoil by 30%, and you have weapons that do not move. Take the Gauss Prime for an example, an assault rifle that I would never have used prior to this update. It felt lackluster despite being based off an actually pretty solid weapon by design. It as it stands out of the box sports a pretty low horizontal recoil so an additional 10% of effectively quote unquote nothing is still close to nothing. 
The end result is an AR that I actually had to get out of the habit of pulling down on the mouse with. I was legitimately pulling down too hard and taking my crosshair off the heads of my targets. It also has to be said that any burst fire weapon that can take an angled grip is just hilarious to use. Any weapon you like to burst fire with, whether it be locked to a burst fire mode or not, benefits greatly from this attachment combo and allows for some serious tap firing to keep follow-up shots on target. For the more chaotic of you, the short barrel laser sight combo is still the way to go. The short barrel now reduces your hip fire cone of fire bloom by 40% when fired from the hip at the cost of 20% more vertical recoil while aiming down sights. So, most of your go-to weapons that used to benefit from the advanced laser sight are now going to see the same amount of benefits from this little getup. Nothing much has really changed here since we first looked at the attachment on the test server. And yeah, for those wondering, the short barrel is still pretty nutty on the Tanto. Throw on the InfraVision implant to give yourself the best possible target acquisition capabilities. Uh, yeah, seriously, this loadout just becomes crazy good. You simply don't have to aim down sights. You may as well break right mouse button off of your mouse because, well you don't need it anymore. Sure, the Tanto may have subpar damage profiles out of the gate, but well, if you, if you can get perfect accuracy while firing from the hip and can literally just click heads, then you don't really need the most optimal damage model out there. You can just click on the head, get a few hits with that perfect accuracy of yours and win. Oh, huh, funny that. There's also that new K-cap ammunition option for the TR, which for me and my playstyle is still a total meme and it's something that I would never personally equip. I can see why some people would equip it, but you'll never see me recommend it because my recommendations always tend to come from a degree of experience. And well, if it's an attachment option that doesn't benefit my experience, then what's the point of me recommending it at the end of the day? Now, beyond the sweeping attachment changes, some weapons have really stood out to me here. And funnily enough, one of the weapons that I'm about to talk about here is one that I roasted in my top 10 underpowered weapons video. And it's also a weapon that so many people tried to pick a fight with me about, the Trap M1. Hate to break it to you guys, but this little moment right here, this one, I'm going to enjoy it because it's a small I told you so moment. I say that all in good fun. Don't worry, because we all win here. The weapon received a sizable buff, moving it up to the 200 maximum damage profile. Now, this was always a weapon that could consistently score a three-shot headshot at all ranges, but now it's got a little bit of excess damage to sort of, you know, do a bit better with body shots. And in addition to that, it can throw on a compensator now, which makes it just an extremely effective burst fire weapon on a class that can cloak. So, uh, what's not to love, hey? I think the compensator really did sort of push the weapon into a more consistent realm of use, which is what you really want out of a burst fire weapon. My NC pride is hurt a little here though, considering that we are now no longer the only faction with that glorious damage model on an automatic weapon. Ah well. Moving on, the archer and the short bow for that matter. Damn. Damn, are they fun to use now. Now, yes, they can one-shot enemy infantry with a headshot up to a certain distance away. I don't have those exact values in front of me right now, but to me, I'm most looking forward to cracking some of those max suits wide open with these buffs. As it stands, a max suit will now go down in two shots to an archer up until 156 meters with a headshot, then three shots to kill beyond that with headshots. That's a long-ass distance, for those wondering, and in most quote-unquote base fights, you'll never go beyond that. Body shot wise, you're looking at a four shot kill still, so you'll need to go for them headshots on the big, slow moving targets that a max suit is, but max suits fall by the wayside with headshots and it feels amazing. Big shout out to Pygex on Reddit for doing the testing while the weapon was on the test server. I believe these exact stats went to the live version, so these bullets to kill stats should line up with the version of the archer that is in the game as it stands. The butcher is also a goddamn menace now with the 300 round magazine and heavy barrel as well. Don't let anyone tell you otherwise. Run scavenger with that build and every kill with a sidearm or a knife while you have the butcher equipped with the extended mags is an additional 60 rounds back in the magazine straight away. Reloading with the Butcher is an old wives tale now. And man, if you can chain your kills, you will do wonders with it. In the world of new, my vehicle compadres have gotten those new top mounted vehicle weapons to run with. You guys have gotten the N30 Trawler for the NC, the M18 Palisade for the TR, and the V42 Pariah for the VS. Oh, and because everyone let me have it in the last video, yeah, the NSO's got the HCG20 as well, but this technically isn't a new weapon. It's just a weapon that can now be equipped on 
NSO ants, sunderers, and harassers. We covered the NCTR and VS weapons in our last video, which you can find linked in the card above, so I'm not going to spend any time going over them in this video here. I don't think they got changed at all since we covered them in the last video, so my thoughts remain the same as they were in that video. I was really keen on running a Sunday Battle Bus column on stream last week with you guys, had the servers been running properly, but it is what it is. The Lodestar module for the Galaxy and the Deliverer module for the Ant are now also in the game as defensive slot options for each vehicle respectively. The Lodestar module lets the Galaxy deploy into a spawn point with a defensive shield activated, and the Deliverer gives the Ant a passive vehicle ammo dispenser and lets the vehicle deploy into a spawn point as well. I have to also say, just as a general sort of overarching observation from the last few days of playing the game when you're not dealing with lag, that is, that time to kills have felt a lot more consistent for automatic weapons at more ranges, which has felt really nice with this update. This has definitely been partly thanks to the changes made to Nanowave and how it no longer has a blanket 20% reduction against all small arms weapons, as now this benefit is only provided to sniper rifles. It's great to see the time to kill become more consistent, I've got to say, but I still want to see those 20% nerf benefits applied to max anti-infantry weaponry and shotguns, essentially becoming like an anti-cheese slot that you can equip should you want to counter that stuff a bit more directly. In fact, with the changes to shotguns that have aimed to make them more consistent in this update, thus arguably buffing them, the need for that has never really been stronger in my opinion. I'm not going to go stat for stat or buff for buff talking about exactly what's happened with these shotgun consistency you know, changes because we've covered that in a previous video already. Once again, linked in a card in the top left if you want to check it out. But I did say in that video where we did briefly go over the shotgun changes that I needed to see how they would perform on the live server before I came to any conclusions because, well, that's just the way I like to test these overarching changes. To see them in action and see how they affect the game in the live environment where I'm not just shooting at, you know, target dummies that are standing still. The verdict's in and shotguns are just insane now. The pump actions in particular with a smart choke, the damage potential reaches out to insane distances and all you really need to do to secure a kill anywhere within maybe 15 meters is just tap the ADS button, fire at center mass and watch the poor bastard's soul keep running as his body drops dead, wondering what the hell just happened to him. Seriously, the pump actions are ridiculous to use now and are arguably a little bit too consistent in my opinion. The jackhammer with the MPL in burst fire mode as well is just something else. It's become a permanent fixture to my secondary weapon slot on my heavy assault again because, well, with the MPL reducing the recoil while firing from the hip by such a large amount, you just keep the crosshair on target and, well, that's three rounds of extremely consistent shotgun damage just dropping a person at a pretty extended distance, it has to be said. But the real bastard of a thing is this, the fucking Baron with slug ammunition. Slug rounds now dish out a maximum damage of 600 on semi-auto shotguns dropping off to 400 minimum damage. And I believe that the damage range is dependent on the shotgun itself. Now, the Baron has always been known for its exceptional damage over range with its pellets, which translates to its slugs now, which gives the good old Baron a two-shot kill in close quarters combat. And if you throw a headshot in for good measure, I believe this extends out to a 25 meter two shot kill. This thing has been dominating the kill leaderboards of late and for good reason, it's insane at its current level. I'm gonna go the whole nine yards and say that it's a little ridiculous right now. I was able to get engaged by someone using full automatic weapons, turn around, hit them twice on the back foot with this thing and come out on top. And this is against players that I know are competent and can shoot well. This thing just has an insane time to kill with slugs with those two shots timed right. I'm not sure exactly what the perfect time to kill with the Baron is yet, but I know it's beating a lot of automatic close quarters weapons at the moment with those slug rounds. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comment section down below, guys. I'd love to hear what you guys are thinking about this update. Have you actually had a chance to play it much or has the service stability issues just driven you away from the game for the past weekend? Let me know down below. If you guys enjoyed the video, leave a like. It goes a long way to supporting the channel. If not, the dislike button works there as well. Get subscribed so you up to date with all future videos that we release as well as whenever we go live here on youtube directly once again guys i hope you enjoyed today's video peace out and i will see you guys all in the next one take care guys have a good one